shrink-wrapped Hanmatech, oh yes, Hanmatech DM20, the next cheapo in the spotlight today. Hanmatech DM20. Hanmatech DM20 shrink wrap. Seeing this all the time now in the cheapo realm. Well, for the most part, anyway. Uh, yeah, hey, what, what, whatever. It's all the same. So let's take this off and check out this little puppy. Picked this up for about 15 Canadian on Amazon, around uh, 10 or 11 US dollars. So it is definitely inexpensive. Hey, they even give us a pretty decent looking box uh, to ship it out and two AAA batteries. Let's get a handy little dandy Hanmatech user manual. And it's in multiple languages, of course, but gets the job done. Gives us the specs. And speaking of specs, don't expect too much from this little meter. Meter itself is really plasticky. I'm talking major plasticky here. Uh, it doesn't really feel well made, but you know, once again, look at the price point. That being said, the boot does have a bit of rubberized something to it. So it, I think it's gonna help a little bit if you tend to, uh, if, if you accidentally drop this meter. That being said, those buttons, yeah, they're plastic. They're not nice soft touch buttons. They're, they're plastic. Everything is plastic and that tilt stand, well, you know, it's really okay. According to Hamatek, this meter does not need to stir the knob. What the hell does that mean anyway? I think what they're trying to say is we don't have a selector. No, it's push button only, uh, digital, no analog functionality going on here. I hope that's what they're trying to say. By the way, really basic in terms of functionality. We've got resistance, continuity, and volts, AC, DC. That's about it. Also have NCV and a flashlight, but this is really a bare bones meter. Turn it on simply by pressing down the power button, bada boom, bada bing, and there you go. There is the display itself. Ah, it's okay. Um, you know, it's just a typical LCD display. I believe this is 6,000 count. Actually, it's a meter of sixes, so 600 volts AC DC, 60 mega ohm, uh, 600 milliamps. You get the idea. Backplate is enabled just by pressing the light button there. A lot of bleeding going on. Look at that. We have one LED. Oh my goodness. That only stayed on for about 10 seconds. So once again, ugh, rather use this boot itself actually does come off. You really got to pry at it, but it will come off. So yeah, you'll have that little bit of rubberized protection, which is a good thing. Something else I don't like is the fact that those inputs are not color coded. Look at that. That positive input is the same color as all the other ones. So eh, in terms of safety. Test leads are super cheap. Do the old pull test here. Oh, it's passing the pull test, but man, oh man, they are really cheap plastic. And the shrouding on the other end, really, really short. Um, it does fit into the meter all right. It's pretty snug, but eh, crappy leads. Once again, this is a smart meter per se as well, so you can manually select those ranges or just let it do the thinking for you, which is what we're gonna do here. Have that DC precision voltage tester and 5.00 is what we should see. And 5.010, so about 10 counts out. In terms of accuracy, they're giving us plus or minus 0.8% of the reading and five digits. So uh, according to this, it's in spec. AC volts 120.7, true RMS, looking good. Because it's a smart meter, continuity is really going to suffer. There's always a delay. And look at that delay. About a second and a half, maybe two seconds. You do have a nice visual uh, indicator here as well. But man, it is slow. Let's try Pro Masters. Pro Masters. Yeah, it just does not help that lag whatsoever. Perhaps a little bit louder, but eh, still kind of crappy. Sixty-eight point five decibels, maximum output in continuity. Finally, we're in resistance now. Accuracy-wise, not too shabby. 101, 102 ohm for a hundred precision ohm. Let's take a look at that infamous 0.5 of an ohm resistor. Continuity is kicking in because it's so low. Does not like it whatsoever. Curious if we have any resistance on these ProMasters. No, we don't. Just a crappy meter. 
take a look size wise compare that to the uh, ever so popular ht 118e from kiwi's it is almost half the size finally we're gonna look at the ncv and what do you know something works well So depending where it is, it's about two to three bars. And you can tell the uh, beeper gets a little louder, a little faster as it uh, increases in threshold. So yeah, not bad. Now looking at a mains panel, and yeah, you can see that is really picking up that electricity. All right, NCV works. Now we're in milliamp mode, sitting at 370 milliamps, according to the power supply. Let's take it up a little bit. 2.5 amps. I'm gonna bring it up to 10 amps. We do have a high current alert as well as an audible and visual at the 10 amp marker. Ah, there you go. Seems to work at least in current. By the way, there's no way to hard code it in manual mode to uh, current, you have to simply make sure your input jack is selected into the uh, current inputs and the smart mode will automatically kick in. Tear down time it is, here we go. Oh, isn't that nicer than they gave us a couple of cutouts for the speaker. Wow, great. Um, here we have the battery connectors for the PCB soldered in there. Looks like it's hand soldered. Yeah, it's all right. Now let's take a look at that PCB itself. I'm gonna start from the top, work my way down. Look at that massive NCV filament over here. So that's what's giving us that really good non-contact voltage detection. Much better than that onboard sensor you see in some of the cheapos. Here as well as the LED. Wow, that is a long LED display connectors over here. This is the EEP ROM T24C02A. Uh, so chances are that is a DreamTech IC, most likely. At least they gave us a current shunt. Uh, there it is, small but there nonetheless. Uh, one PTC that is on the voltage side and there is our milliamp fuse rated at 500 milliamps. Those input jacks are in there, whole oh, hum kind of a way, split variety. Uh, yeah, we see that all the time. Okay, let's take a look a little bit further. Reverse side of the PCB, not much going on here. Uh, no other forms of input protection, what have you. Pretty, pretty plain. Uh, factory programmable header over there I'm assuming uh, here are the contacts for the zebra strip and speaking of zebra strip there it is way down there for that display that 6,000 count liquid crystal digital display and uh, that's it soft touch buttons on this side uh, plastic uh, housing on the exterior so not much going on pretty basic hey wasn't expecting anything different by the way the fab date on here is at October 20. 22. All right, let's put this back together, come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Hamatech DM20. Ah, pass this one by. Unless you need an NCV meter, then it's not bad. Now, one of these smart multimeters, a dime a dozen these days, I've got to tell you, this one does nothing special. And at the end of the day, for what you're getting, yeah, it's cheap, but you could get better quality, better functionality for just a little bit more dinero. This meter just reeks of cheapness as well. I mean, that body housing is so plasticky. Oh, I'm telling you. And why can't you at least select current mode manually instead of relying on Mr. Smart? I don't know, doesn't make sense to me. The Hanmatech DM20 gets a dismal two out of five stars. Pass this cheapo smarty, it just isn't worth your time. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one. Keep on testing.